soft velocity. In this chapter, I would like to make a graph so I can display all of my sales. I have this list of sales and I would like to have a graph so I can display those, those sales in a more friendly way. In this case I made a button and I'm going to use this script chart.js If I read the documentation it seems very straightforward to implement and it's very easy to add this code to Clarion so let's do it first I have the script in here I made a folder and I put the script here second I'm going to add the script to the skeleton and let's save the skeleton Now, this is not going to use a div, this is going to use some canvas and I will use the ID to refer to that particular chart. Let's do it in Clarion. First, I made a button here and that button is going to call a simple window and I have it here. It is just a basic window, nothing extra. There is no need to add anything else. And on opening the window, I am checking if I am running under H5 or not. If I am running under H5, I'm going to unhide the, the button. So when I launch the desktop application, I won't be able to click on the button. Let's take a look. As you can see, there is no button for the graph. It's not going to be useful for the desktop application. It is a pure JavaScript and jQuery code. Therefore, I have to do it in a different way and hide the button when I cannot use it. It's going to be better this way. Let's make it a reality here. I don't have any embeds now. First, let's think what are we going to do? Basically we have to gather all the all the database and I would like to put that database in memory using IQ. Let's make it a routine. And before I do that, let's create the queue. It can be a local queue. Sales, only the date and the amount. Because I would like to make a graph using the sales, the, the date, and how much money I made on that particular day. And let's make a routine. Let's call it view queues routine. This is going to be a little bit oversimplified because this is not the point on teaching you how to make a, a queue and go over the database in order to fetch all the records that should be put in, in memory. Therefore I am going to just put the code here. You can download the example and see what I did here. And now let's add the canvas it is better if we make a group why? so I can put some options and I can make everything appear below the group
There we go. Now we have the embed points so I can put some code in here. And the way to do it is using this particular function so I can write directly to the browser. I will need first a div with panel and default. Then I will add a title. After that, I will add the canvas or the graphic here. Let's run it. Right now, it's not going to do anything, but we can check the source codes to see if everything is going well. Let's go back here. There we go. Here we will initialize the chart and here we will put some options for the chart. Let's shoot down H5. Let's go back to Graham. Now, let's try one of the examples. Why? So you can get familiar with the way that the charts are being built. I can copy and paste this code. Let's do that. And let's go back to H5. The graph is working properly, but right now we have red, blue, yellow, green, purple, orange. So we are not fetching anything from the database. And the main purpose of this example is to get the data from the database so I can build my own dynamic charts. And we are going to do that in this step. Let me erase the code for the sample. We don't need it anymore. We are going to need a few things, a few extra things. Let's finish the routines. I'm going to add a second routine here. If we take a look at the example, we have we have some labels. Those labels, in my case, in this particular case, should be the day of the sale. So we can pass this array to the script. And the data. This is something that will change based on the data set. Labels and data. Everything else is going to be static. I can use it. But the problem here is we need a different color for each one of the data, for the data on, uh, options and a different color for each one of the border color. I can make it static, but that is not the point. It's going to be the same. It's going to have the same color. And it's going to be the same color for the border too. Therefore, I am going to make a new routine. Let me explain a little bit of this. I'm using a local bar, a few local bars, so I can construct the portions that will change. In this case, I am going to use random for the colors, and then I'm going to pass the random colors to the local bar, so I can construct the, the parameters. We are going to need a couple, a few extra bars. There we go. Basically everything is a string. And now, where can we start building the script? Well, as I told you on a different chapter, it should be below. Let's 
Let's make some source code here. We need embed code. Don't worry. It is going to be self-explanatory in a short while. Basically, I am going to call the routine to build the queues. Next, I am going to initialize the local bar with nothing in it. It is going to be blank. And after that, I am going to add the tags for the script. Everything else remains the same, except this. Here, I am going to use the local bar and pass it to a different bar so I can write directly to the browser the bar and it will look the same. Remember, you have to escape some characters, otherwise it is not going to work and it's going to cause a lot of errors and you don't want that. Now, secondly, we are going to build the labels. We have a couple routines here. First, we build the queue and second, we build the labels. And then we pass that bar here to the browser. And then we pass the data to the browser. And then we pass the backgrounds and the borders to the browser. Everything else are static options. You can change those options. Let's do it. Let's run this example. Not in here, because this is a desktop application. Nothing is going to appear here. But in H5, we should have a really nice graph. As you can see, we are using different dates for each part of the, the graph. And it works. It is working. And we can click on it. And it is going to be dynamic and everything else. But what if I want to have a different graph, a different kind of chart? Well, it is very easy to implement. Let's shoot down H5 again and let's go back to Crayon. In here, as you see, I am using a local bar for the type of chart before I send it to the browser. You will see where. Here, we have the type of chart in here and we are writing to the browser this chart and according to the documentation we have different charts different options so I can populate that, that option in here and let's do it again there we go Let's run this application again so we can see the, the new changes that we just made. And it is obviously not working. Why? Because even if I choose a new type of chart, nothing is refreshing the window. Let's solve that. It's going to be really easy. Let's make a new button here. Let's put it in here. I'm going to put it there. And let's run it again. So, there we go. It is working properly now. But I don't like the way H5 is displaying the options, so let's make a small trick. Let's use a small tricks in order to make it a little bit more professional. On those controls, I can find the type of chart here 
and I am going to use buttons instead of radio and I am going to run it again there we go and everything is working just properly I just have to change this because it is not looking very well I don't want to use the name for the local bar so let's change that and let's remove this and now it looks way better and it was very easy to have a new chart inside H5 and I can visually display my database Now let's take a look what happens if we are using a phone. Well, basically it will it will be responsive. And that's fantastic because sometimes we will be using a phone in order to browse the database. And you have a complete integration and a very good solution with H5 and certain scripts extending the capabilities of H5.